lot of we got a lot of people out this evening traveling. Of course, Mike's probably still laying in the bed from back surgery, and um, yeah, we got one with COVID, and um, but just uh, just remember all them that's doing that. Well, guy, is there any prayer requests tonight? I know from what uh, Gabe said, uh, Ronnie and Amanda must be on the move around from the hurricane, I guess, probably. So, just remember them, too. Uh, let everything be all right with them. And then my cousin Wendy, she's on the way to Florida. Yeah. Anybody else? Let's right. continue to remember the church, too. We keep working on it and uh, get everything going with it, too. Man, bless you, bud. Yeah, amen. Well, let's take it. Let's go to prayer, and we'll just each one lead our own prayers tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for your friend Greg once again tonight. Dear Lord, we just thank you for the time to be able to come out to your house tonight. Dear Lord, we just pray that uh, yeah, you be with each one. Dear Lord, we had a lot to be out traveling and things. Dear Lord, and trying to um, think about Ronnie and him uh, leaving uh, to get away from the hurricane. Pray to be with them as they travel and move away from that, dear Lord. I pray to be with Gabe and him as they get back to us, dear Lord, and be with Jess and uh, dealing with the COVID and things, dear Lord. I pray to uh, be with Mike and Stephanie as they're out in Cincinnati uh, uh, to the offer and things, dear Lord. We thank you for bringing good Mike to you and um, uh, surgery will, dear Lord. I just pray that you could uh, be with us during this time of recovery, dear Lord. If you could bring him back to us soon, dear Lord, and we'd be able to. Uh, take back one of the, the roles that he has here, dear Lord, serving. Dear Lord, just pray that uh, you can just uh, take him, build him up, be a sub, and minister and things, dear Lord, and for others that are in the nursing home and things, dear Lord, just pray that uh, uh, you can give us the time to be able to be there, dear Lord, and to hold him up high, dear Lord, that we can make the, 
arrangement to be there to serve God with us. Thank you, Lord. Just pray for some of the terrible piece of life that we can see here, Lord. We can uh, lift someone up here, Lord, that will do it. I pray for you in the job and uh, the things that we do here, Lord. And very good to her work. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, just to uh, lift her up here, Lord. Let her be like the, uh, the ones that's there, dear Lord. If they may see Jesus Christ, dear Lord, just thank you. For everything that you do, dear Lord, just pray for what they're doing. Our family, dear Lord, just uh, uh, help them through everything that they do, dear Lord. Dear Lord whether it be sports or school or whatever, dear Lord, just pray that you can give that protection for each and every one. Be with us tonight as we do it. Bible study, dear Lord, that we can uh, uh, present in a way that everyone can understand it, dear Lord. Just see if this church will be continuing to work on it, dear Lord. Just pray that uh, we'll do everything in your will, dear Lord, and we know that uh, you can make the unexplainable things happen, dear Lord. Just pray that you can be with that situation and help us to, uh, just to be able to make it better, dear Lord. We pray and ask God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, uh, Elijah's not here tonight, so are you, are you, okay, I didn't know, I thought I'd already warned him for it too, because I thought Sarah was going to the hospital, and uh, so I thought. Right in front of Dad. I should have said that too. We need to remember Maddie and Elijah. They was busy with some school things going on, so they wasn't able to make it out. Guys, I believe we are in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Now that's where we're going to go, whether that's where we're at or not. <clears throat> you know, uh, as we went through this, um, well, I'm not going to take off reading like Mike did just yet. I want to get through verse 12 because it kind of ties back to what we've come through. Um, I've got two different study Bibles in front of me and um, because I like them both. But, um, you know, the uh, chapter 7 starts off, uh, you know, we talked about judging and being judged. And uh, if we recall some of the nights that we had uh, different things and talks about that, you know, there's um, a difference in maybe correcting someone, correcting a uh, fellow Christian that is wrong. And, you know, a lot of times they'll look at it as, oh, man, you're judging me. Well, no, I'm not judging you. I'm trying to direct your path in the way that you need to be directed. 
But that is a fine line there between actually judging somebody and uh, so it does have to line up with the Bible when we do that. And there's, you know, as we was talking the other, I think maybe last Wednesday night, I had to come across in my mind, you know, that's, uh, uh, it's laid out in the Bible how to go to talk to somebody. You go do it kind of in secret one-on-one to start with. Then you, <laughs> yeah, you might go get some help next. And then, you know, it's, you don't just border it out in public to start with. And then, of course, um, it talks about the speck in your eye and getting the beam out of yours, you know, uh, uh, which it, uh, the Bible says a beam out of your eye. But if you look into that, that is something me and Mike talked about Saturday when I, you know, we was talking about uh, me taking over this. And he said, you know, I wanted to drop back into chapter 7 and the word we'd already went over and talk about that. And then I said, well, I'll, I'll cover that because you wanted to. Uh, but he was talking about dropping back there, you know, and you, uh, I can remember when I was younger and reading the Bible and looking at, and every time I always thought of a beam in my eye, you know, I was thinking about this big stick blinding the whole side of my eye, you know, and, and I can't help but think that other people, as you read that in our language, would think uh, a beam in my eye or maybe a beam of light or something that was totally blinding me, um, but, you know, when you look at that, it's, it's talking about a little speck of dirt in your eye or whatever. So it can be something very small, or it could be something that was totally blinding you. Uh, and when you think of that, so um, you got to remember that. Mike even said Wednesday night, you know, um, a lot of this is um, you got to look at the way it's wrote. Uh, they'll not take it literal. Some, you know, you got to dig in here, get the get the meaning out of it. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and if we have that same thing in our lives, it it's really going to be hard to straighten somebody else up. That's why Jesus says, "You get your problem fixed, then you go help somebody." So, uh, you know, that's what, and, it, and that's more what he's telling us. Hey, look at yourself before you go to do that but verse 12 that's where we're at and um, it says therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you do ye even so to them for this is the law and the prophets so that's saying whatever somebody does to me I do to them right <laughs> okay I, I was waiting on some nose there yeah, it is no. That is the world, what we think. Well, you know, if Dad kicks me in the knee, I'm going to kick him in the knee, right? But no, this verse says, whatever I want somebody to do to me, that's how I do it. If I, I want Dad to love me, I should love him. You know, and vice versa. It's the, But the world, we do look at it. Hey, if... if Treat them like they treat me. If they treat me bad, I'm going to treat them bad. No, Jesus tells us to love everybody, show love, pray for them. and pray for them. Get, get back what you got in it. You know, and then sometimes that's hard. This study Bible titles that the golden rule. And that is, it, yeah, that is the golden rule. And, and verse 12, therefore all things whatsoever ye would, that men should do to you. So whatever you want men to do to you, you even so to them. So he's saying, you do it to them, just like you'd want them to do to you. Of course, he adds in there, for this is the law and the prophets. you got to remember who he's speaking to here. They're still under the law. And there is a variety of people here. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yep. That's where they leave that one word out.
Yeah. Luke six thirty one. Luke. Yeah, that kind of samples it up there a little bit more. A little better verse of what uh, Jesus was saying, for sure. All right. Um, let's read down to 20. We'll start reading in verse 13 and read to 20. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know, shall know them. Hmm, man. If we make it through that tonight, we're really doing something, I think, here. We don't have no participation, one of the two, see? <laughs> but uh, let's, let's jump back up here to 13 and 14. And that's like Bubby, before he started reading it, he read that title out of his Bible. Uh, two ways, uh, mine says two ways contrasted. Um, the wide, this other one says the, the straight and wide gates. But, uh, you know, when you think about that, and if you don't know and you're thinking about it, it says, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be, be which go in thereat. That, if you think about that, and which we, if you're a Christian and you understand it, we know that the road is not near as easily like 
I'm trying to sum up Jesus' analogy here that he's using, but when we come into that gate, we kind of stay on the straight and narrow, as we say nowadays. Is that's, that's living the Christian life. But if we go out into the world, there's many different avenues we can take in the world and not follow Christ. Uh, with, uh, why, you know, the wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. You know, if, there, if we're letting anything pull us off here and there, uh, you used to hear the analogy, riding the fence, you know, uh, um, Christians straddle on the fence, you know. And, and when you think about that, we need to be straight on the fence, you know, going right down, staying on the path that leads to Jesus. Uh, we know what we need to do. It's laid out. If we study and read the Bible, we know that, hey, we need to, we need to tell, he said, go tell the world about me. That's probably the greatest commandment that we have is go tell the world about me. You know, if we accept Jesus Christ, we'll get to that point right there. Go tell the world about me. Show his love. Is it always talking? Is it always in action? No, it's not. It's just living your life in front of other people that is still telling the world about Jesus Christ. There's different, um, I told a guy today, I said, man, I guess I'm just wound different than some of you all. Uh, I, I don't know, I didn't know how to even answer some things. You know, all they think about is, work and how many hours they can work i'm like guys i'm looking to see how many hours i can't work <laughs> you know and still keep my job but um which i understand you know there's times that we need to work a little bit more to make get things done or make extra money whatever it may be but uh you know but it is man the the world is so out there let's jump and read 14 because straight is the gate and there is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. What do you think he means there uh, with few there be that find it? You think about it, if you're driving down the road, right, and you see a nice Ford lane over here, 70 mile an hour, or a single lane road over here that's 25. Where are you going to go? I, I'm using this as an analogy. I, I need to get to Charleston. Four lane at 70, single lane 25. You're going to choose the four lane, right? That's, that, that's almost what Jesus is saying here. This is just the way it comes in my mind. But we go, we go up there, the easy choice is Four lane 70. The harder choice is the single lane 25. I think that's the reason so many people like the wide path because you don't have near as many obstructions. You know, if you're on the narrow path that's leading to heaven, you know, I can't I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be doing it. They don't even look at my supposed to be doing this right. I do it. You know, and yeah. that's, 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 that's the way I, I see it. I think that's what a lot of us tell them. He just found Jesus.
Yeah. Straight gate right there. <laughs> Sorry, Gabe. Something else I, I, I meant to mention before we started any of this. If you, as you go on down through here, as Jesus is ending this sermon, there's uh, many contrasts that he uses here where there's two. Like we're starting it out right here with two gates, wide and narrow. And we're going to see that more, you know, with uh, two trees, two professions, two foundations. So <laughs> as they go down through there, it's something to remember, but, um, you know, it's all good comments. And I even thought this would be two hard verses to teach or discuss with somebody that had no understanding of the Bible. Because if you come in and I give you the analogy, I just I thought of this, I give you the analogy of the four-lane and two-lane road, you're like, well, oh, man, I don't want to do that. That would be hard. But it's not. Once we actually get there and get on board with Jesus and we're on the straight and narrow road, it's actually easier. You know, I, I wouldn't, I don't want to go back. I would never want to go back. It, it's, it's very much, um, life is way easier now. Um, was it to start with? No. Because I still kept a couple lanes, one on each side. Um. But now, once you grow in Christ, is it always easy? No. It's always going to be easy. No, it's not. I mean, it's still going to be a rough road, you know. Uh, but, but I did think of that as I, I always like to go back to, I mean, Gabe even shared where they was listening to us in South America. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I like to go back and hit that as, you know, that's not a discouragement. It is just a, it's almost kind of a warning. It, Jesus has given examples of two ways. As, as I um, pointed out, the twos as we get into them. Um, but he is looking at that. You tie back to the whole first of this, you know, he's encouraging us to pray. He gives us that golden rule. And he starts this chapter out, you know, he's, he's talking about um different ones that was in the crowd and and you know get your life right he's saying get that beam out of your eye go down hey pray about it encouragement to pray here's the golden rule this is what we need to do if we want our lives to be better do unto others as we want others to do to us because have you ever had I, I, I got i'm getting off here i'm gonna end up preaching or something here tonight but as I think about it, but but I get to that that point, and I think about doing unto others as others do. You would want others to do unto you. Have you ever had anybody that really disliked you, or a person that was treating you bad, and you still treated them good? See which one hurts them the worst. You treating them good. A lot of times hurts them worse than what you could do if you was treating them bad. Because they're doing something bad to you and you're like, I still love you. Now you think about Jesus. Think about all the bad stuff we've done in our lives. And Jesus is like, man, I died for you on the cross for that. And you think about what he was, the bad things he's done, he still loved us. He said, I'm still here. I'm still going to do this for you. I'm still going to help you through this point in your life. 
We, we've said this in the last couple months. You know, you think about um, going through that rough patch. And you think, oh, where you at, God? You left me. You get to the worst part of it, you turn around, he's standing right beside you. Yeah. He never left you. <laughs> That's right. He, he, he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, and he doesn't. He's there. So, you know, when you think about that, I, I wanted to kind of clear that up about the gate. So I don't want to come off as like it's a harder choice or something. It's not a harder choice. It's the best choice. It's the right choice. And once you get there, life's going to be better. It's just like that. Treating somebody like you want to be treated. If we really used that, it would, it would you think about it, the whole world done. It would be great. It drops us down here, uh, 15 through 20, um, what we got left that we read. Um, you know, this one's, well, both of them are, it's false and true teachers. Um, so we're still kind of getting two different things here as we look into this again, false and true teachers. But it says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly, inwardly, they are ravening wolves. You think about that. Think about today. I don't want you to mention no names, but just think to yourself, is there somebody you can think of that fits this thing? I mean, there is in my head. And you say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. You're, you're judging. No. See, that's, that's where our, the world wants to take us to. As he says, judge not that you be judged. That's verse 1 in chapter 7. So I'm not judging, but he, because of the, he, he tells us right here, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. So I have to be able to recognize this, right? I have to figure it out. If I come up here and say my only goal was to actually destroy the church, you know, maybe spend every dime a church has got and uh, don't really want to see it grow, but i got to come in in these sheep's clothing, so I want to make it a little bit better. But actually, I've got something deceitful in my heart that I'm trying to do, uh, and five-year plan down the road is destroy the church. And you all, as a church, has got to be able to see that, right? When I come in, man, it's the greatest pastor, greatest guy we've ever heard preach in our lives. But we've got to be able to see that. And it's, I'm not doing this. <laughs> so don't think that. I'm using myself as an example. But as we come into that, we have to see that. I can think of some people that, that's in my head. Like I said, I wasn't going to speak names because I don't think I should. But that is in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they do have a wolf in them. They are after something besides what truly God wants. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's... That's what comes to mind, Andrew, when you come as a Christ, when you evangelist, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. You know, it's up, it's up to me to go by. It's not. It's my responsibility to handle. I, I'm yeah. not supposed to know it, and I don't know it all. And a lot of it I don't understand. But you'll know if you read the Bible, and you'll know you'll be able to tell if somebody's trying to pull the wool over your eyes. But if you, you know, that is what always got me when I used to teach in high school kids to pull the wool. Some of them know what I was talking about, which was through the Bible. And I said, you know, I, I believe here and other preachers that I've seen in places, I don't believe there's any of them, you know, that 
I've heard around here is you're in trouble with something you don't care. But if I go to church and I don't have my Bible and I'm just listening to what's being read out of the book to me, I go down there. You know, he's in control of me. What the Bible mm-hmm. has to say. That's why I think it's really important that a man carries the Bible with him. Yep. Uh, you know exactly what's being said and you want to hear what it is. Yep. Verse 16. That's the next one. It says, You shall know them by their fruits. Yep. And that is exactly right. I mean, it's everything that Dad explained, and Mom brought it up there about knowing by your fruits. I mean, that's... There you go. That's that's it. He says, you know, and everybody looks at us, hey, you're judging me. No, I'm not judging you. You know, if, if Gabe does something, I don't even, uh, that goes totally against the Bible. Or maybe he he comes and does something at church that goes against the Bible. Now, I'm going to go approach Gabe about that, which I know Gabe, and he could do the same to me. We would take that, you know, and be able to, I say, Gabe, man, you shouldn't do that. Well, why? Or, and I could show you something. You know, I, I need to have something that backs me up to that, you know. Uh, but um, not that we're ever going to uh, hit see that. But it's just like the end of 16 where he asked the question, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? And it's just like that as we go and look at it and knowing people by their fruits, if this is what this man does is nothing to honor God, um, never goes to church, I mean, lives the, just say he lives the most sinful life that he can live. Everything against God. And his fruit is showing nothing of God. And I can make an assumption that this man is not a Christian, right? He doesn't know God. I see his fruit. Am I condemning him? No. I'm not his judge. God is his judge. But if I see that continually, that the fruits is not bearing anything towards God, then I, I I have the responsibility to go tell him about Jesus, right? And as I look into that, I know that hey, this guy doesn't isn't where he needs to be with God. I'm not judging you, but I can see through your actions that you're not doing that. So that. Yeah.
devil will tell you that that's the biggest thing that he's got of somebody being saved. They're going to say, oh, they have a clean friend. You know, that's the biggest lie that there ever was because I probably thought that myself too. But after I got saved and started to check, man, I had so many friends that I didn't have to worry about the two or three that I was leaving behind. You know, they yeah. had to get the devil using that to try to tell me, hey, man, you ain't going to get saved because you're leaving these two friends because they don't believe in you. You know, the Bible or whatever that is. And when you get saved, God, now you worry about I, I, I don't know if any that are lost, but you would gain way more than that. You would gain a bunch more friends yep. of, being, of being saved. Being yeah. in church. And that's the thing, you pick up friends that you can actually count on, too. Yeah. Most of the time. I mean, when it comes to it, the rubber meeting the road, and you call and say, hey, I need this, it's, it's, it's going to happen. You probably find out, I mean, if you know someone's plugging your friend in, and you call back on them for something, you couldn't tell them when you come. No. Nope. Brother, brother, or sister in Christ, you could, you know, you can tell them. Mm -hmm. They'll do that. I wanted to, Gabe, you, you can throw it up there. Six, Luke, six and 43. And, and, and it says, for a, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither do, doeth a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. And, and that ties you together there with that last question there about in 16 where Matthew wrote down, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? But when you think about that, there's, if all we ever see and all we ever do or bear is the wrong thing we're not going to see good fruit out of it right i mean but uh it's just like that i can see since i got serious about church the fruit that i've bared out of that whether it be my family my kids uh different things like that i i even i think back on which I, I don't count it as as me but i, I can look at some family members that Probably, if I wouldn't have done what God wanted me to do and had planned for my life, they wouldn't be where they're at or saved today. You know, and, and you think, well, that's a lot of pressure to have on it. Yeah, it is, but it's the truth. I mean, if we don't do as, you think about it, how many, if God tells you, he stops you in the middle of Charleston and in a store or in a mall or something and says, talk to that person. Tell them about God. Tell You know, you got some strong feeling to do that. How many people are you taking away from that? It might be that you meet Dad in the mall and he's already a Christian. And God tells you, hey, go tell him that about Jesus Christ. You start telling him about it and he says, well, I, I am saved. And just that talk between you and two actually gets the one that's standing beside you that to think about God. And I know you can use all kinds of things. You can think, well, this could happen, that could happen, and I understand that. But I, as an example of teaching this and doing good fruit, sharing good fruit, and watching out for the ones that don't, this is a warning. you got to remember, we're here on false and true teachers. You have to be able to discern whether I'm delivering what God gives me or I'm just delivering what Adam wants to deliver. I can assure you I don't deliver what I want to. You were preaching and you see a lot of people saved aren't in good preaching, aren't bringing good fruit. Yep. 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 Thank you. 
Lepo. I want to jump on down to 19 because we pretty much covered uh, the good fruit, bad fruit trees. And, uh, you know, of course, that's Jesus' example of us, what we should be doing. But, uh, you know, verse 19 would be one of the feel-good preachers would skip that verse. And uh, you wouldn't want to talk about it. And it, it, honestly, it is something we don't, uh, it seems like we don't preach about a lot or talk about a lot anymore. You know, and, but there is two choices. It's heaven or hell. If God puts it in my message, I'm going to preach it to you. If he tells me to preach hell for 365 days a year, then that's what we would do. But, you know, that's, uh, we have to, I trust in God that he's giving me the right things. He knows what people need to hear, you know. But, uh, you know, verse 19, that is what it's saying, you know. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, so if it's a bad tree and it's on the wide road, it's going to be cast into the fire. And, I mean, just to put it literally, he's talking about hell. If we're not saved through and by Jesus Christ, if we don't take that straight and narrow road, we have a choice to make, heaven or hell. And if we do not, that's it. We're cast into the fire. Just like if you have a tree in your yard that does absolutely no good for you. I've always thought this. I, I'm, Gene's got a tree. My Uncle Gene's got a tree around his house that they're allergic to. Cut that thing down. Get rid of it. Tommy Harris used to tell me all the time there was a tree out the corner of uh, between our houses. It was a chestnut tree. He said, cut that thing down. Cut that thing down. It's, it's no good for us. We're not eating the chestnuts. And he had uh, experienced about twice in his life where he had got uh, burrs in his feet from walking with no shoes on. If we've got a bad tree, cut it down. Get rid of it. And Dad will throw it in the wood stove. And that's, I mean, honestly, that's it. But verse 20 says, Wherefore, by those, their fruits, ye shall know them. So am I judging them because they produce a bad fruit or a good fruit? No, Jesus tells us that we will know by what they do, by what they, how they serve God and what they're producing and what's, what's happening. He says, look, study this. If I was totally against God and I was out for myself, I 100% believe that something would have already happened here. The church would have probably not ever grown to start with because God would have said, well, I'm not, I'm not rewarding that fruit there. I don't want to plant more seeds there because they're not following correctly. They're not doing the right thing. These are things that 
You know, I've always thought of this as there are things that um, there's there's going to be different ideas. Like, well, we ought to do this little part this way or this little part that way or uh, different things. But, you know, if the end result is still good fruit, we're probably following God's path, right? Right. Um, Yeah, I, I've I experienced that once in my life, Bubby, and uh, I've not said this too many times, but there was a guy at a church that I was going to that was standing in the way of even Sunday school class really being happening, but ultimately of the church growing and the right fruit being spread. And uh, this man lived a healthy, healthy life, was in good shape. And uh, it was about two months. He was gone. Got sick and died. And uh, he took a pretty big stand on trying to shut down. Not really shut down, just... It wasn't in order. It wasn't on the time clock, the right point in time. I'll say that. This was supposed to happen at 10. This was supposed to happen at 1045. This was supposed to happen at 1115. And it was all to do with the time clock, and it wasn't happening on that time clock. And I believe God showed him who's, who, who had the time clock. You know, uh, I just, you know and, and that's almost a, kind of a warning, you know, out there. If we do something that we know totally we shouldn't do, that are we going to make mistakes? Yeah. I'm going to make a mistake preaching. I can make a mistake teaching, but uh, you stand in and try to do the best you can do. And uh, if, if you really, you know, just like when I pray before I preach, move me out of the way, use me as your mouthpiece, Lord. I mean that. And... 80% of the time, or maybe more than that, I get scared sometimes because I think I'm, I'm scared that somebody's going to ask me what I preach about. And sometimes I'm like, man, I don't even know what I said, what I preached about. And you say, no, wait a minute, preacher. No, wait a minute. That's, that's how I understand that I am doing it. I told him to move me out of the way. Not use, my, not use me, not my mind. Use his. Yeah, it, it took me a long time to understand that, though. And, you know, there's probably people that could listen to that and be like, man, this guy is crazy. But I understand and that that's how he leads us. That's how he gets us through what we need to be get, got taken to. Yep. Yep. You know, that that's just like, you know, somebody that ran a time clock could not stand to be here <laughs> anymore. You know, just, uh, I, I can't help but think, you know, whatever, about a month or so ago when I said, well, I'm going to get up and preach. And I mean, I was just, that was burning on me the whole time. I mean, like, and I almost, I almost did. I was like, no, I'm going to let Gabe get up and do his part. But then I just jumped up and done it. And then we didn't even get to Sunday school. <laughs> we had two hours of just church. And, you know, that was the last time that Sandy got up and testified. Maybe the only time I remember her physically standing up and testifying. If I wouldn't have followed God, would that have happened? Maybe, but maybe not. You know, our, our, each little thing that we do, you know, and as we look at that, you know, telling each other about our fruits, you know, that's, it's easier to preach somebody's funeral, memorial service, whatever. You know, I'd looked on Sandy, and from her profession, 
She told me many times she was saved. How she was saved, where she was saved. It makes it easier. I know where she's at. Well, uh, what do y'all think we pick up on 21 next week? Um, we probably have to still deal with me. Unless somebody wants to. We got 21 through 29, so maybe hopefully we can get through chapter 7 there next week. But uh, uh, it's ending uh, Jesus' sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. It's uh, ending that up. And then uh, we're going to get into some uh, miracles and things that Jesus done following that up. So it's uh, as you get into chapter 8 um, and things that go on with that. But, uh, you know, if you get a chance... Um, read the end of chapter 7 this week. It's only about nine verses. Uh, get some thoughts on what you think it is. You know, it don't always have to be me. or um, I don't think we've ever really called anybody out besides maybe Mike and Stephanie at each other saying that they're wrong, right? I hope they watch that so they get that part right there. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> so hopefully Mike watches that. He'll like that. <laughs> I think it was last week. Stephanie said, "No, nah, I don't. I, I don't think you're right." <laughs> oh, it's good though. But uh, it, it's a good time, guys. Thanks for the participation. I'm probably a little out of practice on the Bible study, but um, doing a good job. We'll get it the best we can. Uh, anybody got anything to add? I know, guys, I tried to think. The only thing I can think that we got coming up is October 13th. We got the nursing home, and uh, we should be on uh, potluck month. So we should have a potluck dinner. Just bring whatever you want. At, uh, we'll eat right after morning service and then go down to the nursing home. Um, we did have a uh, – we'll go ahead and throw this out here to the ones that's here, but uh, – I, you know, and it depends on whether Bub's still in a nursing home or not, but he got Gabe and him down there, and he's really wanting to come to church, and Gabe said, well, why don't we bring church to you? And, um, okay. So we may try to arrange that, and if you got the chance, all right, go to. All right. We're going to let them sing their. Sing a song here. Are we going to do
Mike. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 